Have you ever been learning or teaching something that's a little bit more complex, something that has a lot of interrelated parts that are really important to understand, not just by themselves as a concept, but how they work with each other? Whether that subject is technical or historical, any subject area where you need to understand the relationship between things can sometimes be a little bit difficult to figure out how you're going to teach it. Well, in this video, I'm going to show you a method that I use in order to really help connect things together, to help my students understand subjects, not just by isolated different elements, but as a comprehensive interrelated whole. Now, you might think if I'm teaching something new or learning something, I'm going to grab a textbook. And I'm a huge fan of textbooks, obviously. They're great. A lot of times a textbook will have a nice pathway through material called the table of contents. But there is a challenge with a textbook that has a table of contents. It's a linear approach through the material. It's one element at a time, one subject at a time. Some textbooks are a little bit better. Here's a textbook on structured analytic techniques for intelligence analysis. It does have a uh, table of contents in here as well. So it has that linear pathway. But I really like this book because it has a number of tabs, which means that I can flip through the book to different subject areas quite quickly. In fact, a lot of times with a textbook, I will take tabs of my own and I will insert them into a textbook using color coding for different concepts so I can quickly flip around the textbook and see different subjects. But what if I told you there's a program out there that I use that's amazing that allows me to create a really sort of structured but also navigatable or, or, or disparate or interrelated type of view of the subject that I'm teaching. And in this video, I'm going to build one. I'm going to build a mind map with you using a tool called the brain. And I'm going to build it on a Python programming course that I'm going to then share with my students so that they have a lot of little hangers where they can hang their knowledge and still see the big picture. Let me start by showing you a mind map that I created around business intelligence. So here we have a mind map on business intelligence. You can see I've got the subject here, business intelligence. If I go here, I've got a whole notes section where I talk about business intelligence and get that really nice overview of what business intelligence is. I'm going to show you how I can generate that note very quickly with AI and then modify it based upon my experience and knowledge. You can see I can go into, for example, the course flow for this business intelligence program that I teach. I could go go into something like the business analysis for business intelligence. I can put diagrams in here that I've created. I can go in and put uh, some text in here as well. I can navigate to process identification, for example. I can put information in here. I can go back. I can navigate really in whatever direction I'd like to go in order to figure out how business intelligence works, and in this case, business analysis for business intelligence. And I could go into the value of data to an organization. I could go all the way up back to things like data concepts. You can see that I'm able to have a structured approach, but also an approach where I can explore different avenues and see how they relate to each other. Let's create an entire brain or a mind map based upon Python programming. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to create a new brain. I'm going to create a brain and we'll call this programming. Now I'm going to focus on Python programming, but I'm going to also talk about programming in general. So I can always come back and change this to a different, a different subject or a different uh, uh, wording here. And I'll just go in here. I'll change the background here. You have a bunch of different options around the background. And I'm just going to go into a light blue background or actually let's go into a black background. It'll be a little more visible to you. I can change all of this, but I'm not going to do this as a tutorial on the software. I'm talking more about using the software to create a overview of programming for my Python programming class. So I've got programming and based upon my experience, I'm going to talk about sort of five broad areas of programming. So I'm going to first of all begin by, you know, what is programming, you know, and why is it important? 
So we'll talk about pro what is programming. And then I'm going to go in and I'm going to say, let's talk about, uh, you know, concepts in programming. And these concepts in programming might be uh, for any programming language. So I want to cover some concepts in programming. And then maybe I want to talk a little bit about programming languages. What are the different types of programming languages? What are some common programming languages? And then I want to talk about maybe the specifics of, let's say, um, tools for programming. Or let's talk about environments first. Now, this is all just coming from my own experience. So I'm going to talk about, you know, environments for programming. So things like, for example, IDEs and such. I'll talk more about that. Obviously, I'm building this based upon my knowledge of programming. But you can see that I'm starting to create a mind map, which I can share with my students that they're going to be able to use to navigate to the subject areas that they want to start connecting together. So we have environments and then maybe I'll talk about some of the various tools for programming tools for programming and I can really expand upon this uh, as I as I go through I can do the tools for programming and then maybe what I want to do is I want to talk about uh, you know something like careers in programming so I and I can always modify this and and make changes I made a spelling mistake there so I'll just go in there and put the G on the end there get that all cleaned up programming so you can see I've got this sort of overarching kind of rough dialogue here on what programming is so underneath programming what I can do is I can actually go here and I can take notes so I can put notes in here a neat feature of this particular software is I can actually generate a note using AI to really help me sort of get an overview that I can of course share with others so if I go and I'll, and I'll link down below to my business intelligence brain as well as my programming brain uh, so you can go and see them as they evolve you can go it's you can just share them out so I'll share them with with you you can check them out in the description below so maybe in you know you know what is programming and why is it important an important skill so I'm going to, you know, this is a, a fairly, you know, uh, common type of question that we might have. What is programming and why is it an important skill? I can actually have a thousand words here. I'll generate a note about programming and why it's an important skill. And this will use AI to generate. I have basically have done prompt engineering here that talks about why programming is important. Now, I would not rely on the AI to do the work here. I still need to go in here. I still need to make sure it makes sense based upon my experience as a teacher. But if I'm learning a new subject, this is a great way to start building a framework for myself to start learning. So I'll accept that note. And then what I'll do is maybe I will go in and I will say, okay, let's say, you know, what is programming? I could go in here. Again, I could generate a note. But what I might do is let's go into concepts in programming. So underneath concepts in programming, and I could probably spell programming, right? I could use AI here and I could say here, you know, um, what are the foundational concepts? What are the foundational concepts in programming that are shared across most programming languages? So you can see here that I'm really um, trying to ensure that I have a a prompt engineering or a prompt for generating content that kind of will give me something that I can then work with. So I'm going to go in here and I have an option here to, you know, vary the creativity on this. Um, I'm not going to go through the AI itself, but the point is I'm using AI here and I can generate child thoughts. And what it's going to do is generate a number of different concepts around programming. So I'll accept that. And you can see here, concurrency and multi-threading, control structures, loops and conditionals. So I could even go into here and I could further expand upon this. I could use the AI here and I could say, for example, um, you know, what are some examples 
of control structures, loops, and conditionals. I could generate the child thoughts off of that and you can see it'll go in and do things like best practices. Well, I'll just accept that. So you can go in, you can see I can use best practices for using conditionals. I could go into best practices here and I could say using the AI here, I could say what are some of the best practices. So I could say, you know, describe or I can do describe. So one of the things I can do as if I'm building any type of course or learning plan for myself around this, I could say, you know, describe this in here, generate the note in there. It'll talk about this and this will give me some hooks into start working, starting to work with some of the things that I can, I can begin learning. So you can see it's generated even some code samples in here. I'll accept that in here and I can just continue to build up this mind map, this brain of all of the things that relate to programming. And then I can have navigation through this in multi-direction. So I could say, okay, I want to know about some of the tools for programming. I want to know some of the concepts in programming. And as I go through, and I'm going to keep this video fairly short, after I finish this video, I'm going to continue to work on this. So I'll share it down below. You can go and see what my progress looks like. I can do some pretty neat things here for concepts in programming, for example. I could go in here and I could insert links to videos. I could insert links to resources. For example, let's say for I want to go in here and we want to go into programming languages. I could go in. I'm sure Python will show up here. We'll see if it does. And, uh, you know, I'll say what are the most popular and useful programming languages. We'll generate our child thoughts in here. I expect my usual suspects will show up. Uh, probably things like, you know, it's talking a little bit, you know, maybe I don't like this response here, right? Cause there's, it's not mentioning the languages. So I'll discard that. And uh, maybe I'll go in here and, and try to get a better AI prompt here. Um, what are the names of the most popular and used programming languages. We'll see if it generates, uh, you know, maybe a little bit more C sharp, C++. So we go in here, ah, it's still giving me kind of the same thing. That's fine. I could go in here, accept this as, um, you know, go in, you know, there's different types of, you know, it's not giving me the actual languages, but I could go in and say something like high level versus low level and history of languages for data science. It's actually not a bad result set, but I might want to go deeper into here and I might want to go into um, some of the languages for data science. And then I could, of course, generate child thoughts. I could just put my own in here. So I could just put in my own, but I'm using AI. Um, what are the most popular languages for data science? We'll go in here. We'll see what it generates for me. And you can see C++, Java in here, Scala, R, Python for data science. So maybe I'll accept this. I'll go into Python, for example, and I can start building this out, right? I could start putting links to python.org. I could start linking to some of the videos that I create on my channel, as well as other channels, other courses in here. Um, you can see that I'm starting to build up a really nice brain here, if you would that's uh, starting to, and I can actually take this thought here and we'll just go ahead and put this as a pinned thought so I can always get back to it up here. And then maybe if I wanna go into programming languages and I wanna go into popular languages for, oh, didn't want that one. I wanna go uh, data science and maybe because I'm going to focus on Python, maybe I wanna go ahead and pin this thought as well. So we'll go ahead and pin that thought so I can go into Python for data science quickly, go back to programming. This is again the application, but the point is that by using a combination of a nonlinear approach, a mind mapping pro approach in conjunction with artificial intelligence to create a quick structure, what I can do is create a, 
navigation uh, uh, platform that allows me to break away from a table of contents and really start working with the material and interrelate it. Now, I don't just use this as a way of developing. Obviously, I have experience that I need to bring to the table. And then the other thing that I will often do is I do like the linear approach that a lot of books have as well. So I'll often break down the book itself. So when I get a new book, one of the things I'll do is go to the table of contents and I'll actually build a mind map of the table of contents. I'll go in and type in the entire table of contents, which not only is uh, beneficial because I now have a digital mind map of the table of contents, but I can also then use that as, for lack of a better term, some hangers on which to put my knowledge. So as I'm learning a new subject, I can put those on there. So I hope this was useful. If it was, hit the like button, share with others, comment down below, check out some of the brains that I've created. I'll put them a couple of links down below. Let me know if there's some areas where you're studying that you find a lot of complexity that you think this might be useful for. And of course, as always, share and subscribe and do all those great YouTube things. Thank you very much and we'll see you in the next video.